Hello, my name is Lisa Wardell. I'm the chairman and CEO of Ad Talum Global Education, and I'm really excited today to be able to come and speak with you about One Health. And I'm here with the experts on One Health, uh, and those are three of our leaders of our medical institutions at Ad Talum Global Education. So. I'll start maybe with you, Dr. Callanan. Uh, because we have medical schools, a veterinarian school, and actually also Chamberlain University, the largest nursing school in the US, Ad Talum has always been a leader in what we call One Health. But can you help us understand, uh, we've been hearing public health, we've been hearing One Health. Can you help us understand what the difference is between public health and One Health? Sure. Uh, Lisa, thanks for having us. And that's a common question, um, differences between public health and One Health. And there, in reality, there are probably not very many differences. But if you look at the term public health, it's really about the science of protecting people um, and protecting their communities. Um, and it's often, when you study this, it's often around protecting in the form of health. And so when people study this, there, there's masters of public health, for instance, at our Chamberlain School, as you've mentioned in the Chamberlain University. Uh, they study there um, in, in many different ways. One can be about the promotion of good health practice, but it can extend to the other side of the coin, whereby we're looking at how to detect, how to monitor, and how to prevent different diseases. And what health is the approach to looking at societal diseases and societal issues around the world. And it takes the form or it takes the premise that when you look at diseases, you need to look at them more multidisciplinary. Um, so in other words, you don't just focus on human health. You have to think about the consequences in animal health. And you also have to think about the consequences of the whole ecosystem. How would those terms relate to what we're all experiencing now uh, with the coronavirus? So COVID-19 is a classical and a major public health issue because it's affecting humans and it's affecting communities. And I think even yesterday, the Director General of the World Health Organization called it public enemy number one right now in the world. And so, so that is a public health issue, but how we're approaching it, we can see there's, there's many groups we never thought would ever need to be involved in health involved right now. So we think of our frontline staff, our nurses, our doctors, our healthcare workers, and they're supported behind the scenes with people who have specialist qualifications in public health, many of them again, nurses, doctors, uh, and other professionals. But so we're going to the, to the levels of governments, we're going to the levels of people who work at the borders, people who do global security, people who are responsible for taking um, um, cargo from one part of the world to, to the other. And they all know that they've had to play their part. So we can see all of these particular groups coming together. And the important thing about a One Health approach is it shouldn't be random. It has to be orchestrated. So everyone is actually working in this orchestrated fashion. And we can see this because we can already see in some of the earlier countries that have had this problem that we can see, you know, light at the end of the tunnel. That there is actually improvements happening. We're learning best, best practices from these people. And, you know, that is, that is really what a one health approach uh, exemplifies. Got it. So, Dr. Record, I want to pick up on that because because uh, Dr. Callanan is talking a lot about uh, physicians and nurses and veterinarians. What about the non-medical community? What do they need to know about One Health, public health? How's it impacting their lives? And, and certainly right now it is. What, the, what should they be mindful of uh, as they think about those terms? I think as we look at One Health, it really is about this connectedness that goes beyond what we normally think of in our day-to-day -day interactions. I think that's one of the challenges for most of us uh, going through something of this grand a scale. And so, you know, as we look, uh, one of the things to keep in mind is uh, what's been termed in other circles, uh, the butterfly effect. And that is where small changes in the initial condition create significantly 
uh, larger differences in later conditions. And I think certainly this pandemic is a good example of that. And so looking at what can be done early in this uh, is so important to really impacting what we know will be later outcomes. And so for folks looking at what this means to them, it's really having a better sense of this connectedness where, as Sean was uh, pointing out, we need that community uh, connectedness that it goes beyond just the individual because it's not just about uh, one individual. It's not just about uh, the families uh, and the friends and those who might be at risk. This is really fundamentally, I think, more about a respect for uh, life uh, across, you know, human, animal, and beyond. So uh, for folks to really understand what they need to do in their impact, it, it is to understand that they are an essential piece of this plan that we need to engage as a full global community to impact and make a difference to control and to manage what are the, some of the most uh, incredible outcomes uh, that we've seen in our lifetime. Let me ask you, Dr. Chumley, how is the work we are doing at Ad Talum uh, and at all of your respective institutions, really both from the education perspective, right? We're all um, uh, really paying attention now to the number of healthcare workers and uh, physicians that we have um, in, in our communities, but also from a research perspective. You know, as we get out on the other side of that, how is that gonna support One Health moving forward? One of the ways I really think about uh, a great example of how uh, the, the Ad Talum universities have, have come together is in, a, 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 in our center for, uh, in our Caribbean Center for Disaster Medicine. So, so a great example of a One Health approach to a specific topic and that, that topic uh, being disaster. And, and um, you know, what that, what that center does, it brings the experts within the Ad Talum institutions, the, the, those of us here, also our partners in Chamberlain, which you mentioned before, um, together with experts from across the world, uh, from universities, from governments, from uh, organizations that have an interest in uh, the, the Caribbean. And together we, we work together to advance the, um, the education and the research uh, around the topic of disaster, you know, towards a common goal of improving the resilience in the communities and, and increasing capacity and and um you know certainly during a a disaster today's disaster which is the, the global pandemic the conversations that are going on between members of that the network really um have provided an opportunity for early lessons to be shared best practices to to be shared and and uh, uh being involved in some of those uh, you know granular conversations just really um, reaffirms to me how important it is when you're dealing with a, a problem as challenging as, as what we're dealing now. You really have to have a broad approach and like the One Health approach. Dr. Rucker, maybe I'll ask you, how do you think this pandemic can really guide our, our education uh, perspective, whether it's telemedicine or online or how do you think about that? Sure. Well, and I think the there are a number of different things that this is going to inform. Part uh, of the uh, biggest change here is the general education about understanding what those procedures that we need to do individually. Uh, and I think we want to reinforce uh, those things such as hand washing, uh, containments of all sorts, including social distancing, uh, but also the adherence and speed to action. I think these are two really important items that as much as we know, we've got to make sure that we're a connected community doing this and we know that time matters here. And so I think looking at what we need to do going forward, uh, it really is the biggest concern after in some ways we uh, move on after this uh, outbreak is how we prepare uh, for that it has to do a lot with surveillance um, and getting the procedures in place so we're ready for the next. And oftentimes in the crisis, people are responding, uh, well, we've got to make sure we have that heightened sense of importance because the surveillance will be the key going forward. And looking at that, that informs that whole practice and what we've learned from this event is the same things, you know, as we're learning from uh, 
uh, as we have learned from what was uh, the 1918 uh, pandemic uh, and looking at the catastrophe that happened, we know we've been faster to action. We've had better communication. We've had much better responses, but there are still plenty of things to learn in how we do these better. We see everything that uh, you know is on social media and uh, is out there in the media uh, for medical professionals on the front line. What's happening behind the scenes with medical professionals? Um, how is this sort of changing um, their experience, and and how are we uh, being supportive, even though either either those who are in their education journey, such as the ones that uh, all of you uh, look after, uh, as well as those who are, who are out on the front lines. Yeah, yeah. so there is a lot going on um, behind the front lines. And uh, of course, uh, we are uh, very grateful for the people who are out on the front lines um, treating uh, you know, the, the, uh, everyone who's coming in in different stages of, of COVID-19. But um, so much is going on behind the scenes, and, and several of those things, I think, really are relevant to the conversation we're having today. Um, one of those is that, you know, beginning several months ago when this, when this all started, the, you know, the scientists, the public health people, the, the medical professionals, really from around the world, uh, began writing down all that they were, were seeing and observing, um, putting together their, their research, publishing things as fast as they could, really starting that scientific um, conversation so that, that other people could join in and we could very quickly build our knowledge um, about the virus. And that became, became really, really important. And as we're learning as much as we can about the virus, we're also learning about our capacity as healthcare systems, uh, governments, countries to manage the, the entirety of you know, what is going on um, with the virus. And that leads us to understand what our what our pinch points are. What are the what are the places um, in the management that become very difficult? And you hear your things right now, like like the capacity to test everyone that we'd like to test, um, or you know the capacity to have um, you know enough of the ICU level care uh, that people are going to need. And so behind the scenes, um, because we've identified those pinch points, people from all different professions. Are, are just working rapidly around um, the clock to build up capacity in those areas to get the, the testing we need, to get the spaces we need, the ventilators, the, the experts uh, to manage those, those people that we need. And then, and then while all of those things are going on, um, there's still regular healthcare that's gotta take place, you know? So, so we can put a pause on travel, but we can't really put a pause on you know, heart disease or, or diabetes, and people continue to have those. So you've got your, you know, your family doctors and your primary care physicians, um, some of whom are on the front lines, but many of whom are, are behind the scenes taking care of the regular um, health care that, that needs to go on. Well, I want to thank all of you because I know now is a very busy time as you have students who are anxious about completing their uh, DVM and MD degrees um, and, and you're with them every step of the way with all of the things that they're doing. Uh, but I do hope that this will continue and really jumpstart the, the conversation around One Health. Um, we are, as you know, uniquely positioned because we go across the medical and healthcare spectrum. And, and uh, Dr. Chumley, I hope those learnings that are really coming out of all of these different places as we uh, flatten the curve uh, across the globe, uh, we'll be able to bring together and use in both our research and our education mm -hmm. at Talum Global. And I thank you all so much for participating at a very busy time in the conversation today. Mm -hmm.